In this video, we're going to be talking about identifying compressor mechanical failures. Now, compressor mechanical failures are a little bit different than mechanical electrical failures because you have more choices and you can't see inside the compressor. Most compressor fails due to system malfunctions, which have to be corrected to prevent repeat failures. Okay, a compressor normally does not fail by itself once it's installed. If it fails within the first couple of months of installation, we can say, okay, it was most likely a factory defect. But if it lasts through the first couple months or the first cooling season or in refrigeration, the first month of operation, it's no longer a mechanical failure or a factory defect of that compressor. There's something else going on. So after compressor fails, you need to take a close look at the reason the compressor failed, examine it closely, and try to figure out what else in the system is actually causing the problem. Most compressor failures have to do with start components, okay, or the condensers being dirty. It's normally a dirt or lack of oil or something. So one of the reasons a compressor can fail is because of refrigerant flood back. Okay, that's liquid refrigerant returning to the compressor during the running cycle. Okay, the oil is diluted with refrigerant to the point you can't properly lubricate the load-bearing surfaces. Also, you cannot compress liquid. So you can actually have shaft failure and piston failure, and they will break based on the fact you cannot compress a liquid. Flood back to air-cooled condensers, the result is worn piston cylinders with no evidence of overheating. Cause the liquid washed the oil off the pistons and cylinders during the suction stroke, causing them to wear during the compression stroke. You can also have the center and rear bearings worn or seized, dragging rotor, shorted stator, progressively scorched crankshaft, worn or broken rods. Again, caused by liquid refrigerant coming back to the air-cooled compressors. To, to correct flood back, maintain proper evaporator and compressor superheat. 8 to 12 degrees superheat coming back from the evaporator. You can also need to correct abnormally low load conditions. So if you have a, the, if you have a compressor that's getting liquid flood back, take a look for iced over evaporators. Make sure ice isn't building up. Make sure you have proper defrost. Make sure you have good airflow across that evaporator. Basically what's going on is the refrigerant isn't boiling off. At a worst case scenario, you can install a suction line accumulator, which will stop the uncontrolled liquid return, but that's a band-aid. Try to find out what is going on with the evaporator. That, or look at the charge. Are you overcharged? It happens. Flooded starts, okay, is basically refrigerant vapor migrating to the crankshaft oil during the off cycle. Upon startup, the diluted oil cannot properly lubricate the crankshaft. Could be an erratic wear or seizure pattern, okay. Here's what happens here. Again, if your condenser is, with that includes the compressor is located in a colder area, or in a lower area than where your evaporator is, the refrigerant, the liquid refrigerant, will always migrate to the cooler area. To, for flooded start correction step, locate the compressor in a warm ambient or install a continuous pump down. Make sure there's a crankcase heater on it. So in other words, what we do is we basically pump, make sure that we pump all the liquid refrigerant out of the system into a receiver. We also make sure that the crankcase heater is working during the off cycle to keep that oil warm to make sure that liquid refrigerant does not settle into the compressor. I want it anyplace else in the system with the exception of the compressor. Slugging is again liquid refrigerant getting back to the compressor. Broken valves, rods, crankshafts, loose or broken valve plate bolts, blown head gaskets. Okay, it's the result of trying to compress liquid refrigerant. You cannot compress liquid refrigerant in the cylinders. Liquid acts as hydraulic fluid and it will blow everything apart. 
Slugging is extreme flood back in air-cooled compressors and severe flood and start on refrigerant-cooled compressors. Maintain proper evaporator and compressor superheat, 8 to 12 degrees. Correct abnormally low load conditions, and that could be fixing an evaporator fan. Okay, install accumulators to stop uncontrolled liquid return. Again, accumulators are a band-aid unless you're in a heat pump system. Locate compressors in warm ambient or install continuous pump down. Okay, and again, make very sure that your refrigerant charge is correct. Slugging we a lot of times see when people have overcharged refrigeration systems. High discharge temperatures. Okay, I mean, I'm talking about four or 500 degree discharge temperatures. Okay, it's the result of the temperatures in the compressor head and cylinders getting so hot that the oil loses its ability to lubricate properly. Oil has an upper temperature before it starts boiling and breaks down. This boiling and breaks down causes rings, pistons, and cylinders to wear. It will have leaking valves, and if you take a close look at the oil, it will start having metal debris in the oil, which is just not a good thing. Loss of oil. The result is all rods and bearings worn, scored, crankcaps scored, um, rods broken from seizures, or little or no oil in the crankcase. Okay, you got to watch this most often in semi-hermetic units, okay? You could actually have an oil, little oil um, sight glass down at the bottom, check it on occasion with the system not running and things sitting still. Should have, should always have oil to the oil fill line. When there's not enough refrigerant mass flow in the system to return oil to the compressor as fast as it's being pumped out. Okay, in all refrigeration systems, the oil is actually going through the entire system, but I have to have enough velocity and mass of refrigerant to return the oil to the compressor. So if you ever come across a system that is way low charged because of a leak or something like that, you have to look and see how much oil is in the rest of the system. Oil is going to accumulate in the low spots. I've actually seen rooftop mounted compressors without any oil in it, and it has settled, the oil has settled into the evaporator, and the evaporator is just clogged full of oil to the point where a refrigerant can't flow through it. And it's because the refrigerator the oil has migrated to the evaporator. But there is not enough flow or not a, enough volume of refrigerant to take it back to the conde condenser and compressor. Loss of oil can be corrected. Make sure that the oil failure control is working. There, A lot of systems have an oil pressure cutoff switch on the larger systems. Make sure it's working. Check their system refrigerant charge. Look for abnormally low load conditions or short cycling where the compressor is cycling on and off. Check for incorrect pipe sizes. If, you're, if the pipes are too big, okay, someone decided, oh, we're going to just install the largest pipe we can find to make sure that it works. Uh, that's not a good thing because it, there's not enough refrigerant moving through those pipes to get the oil back. Okay, so you could start having oil traps. Check for low spots, especially in like attic installs or where the refrigerant piping is running through attics over restaurant kitchens. Make sure that there's no dips, okay, because dips acts as oil traps. Check for inadequate defrost. Take a flashlight, take the cover off the evaporator, and make sure that there's no frost building up on that evaporator because, again, you're going to, it's going to act like a low load condition and the um, oil is going to migrate out of the compressor. So your biggest issue with compressor mechanical failures comes from refrigerant or oil. Okay, refrigerant, we cannot have liquid refrigerant in these compressors. Okay, you just cannot. It cannot pump liquid. Liquid refrigerant mixes with the oil, dilutes it, moves it. Your other one is the loss of oil. Oil ending up elsewhere in the system where you don't want it. Those are our basic mechanical failure reasons. Okay, compressors do not fail on their own. Something has caused the compressor failure. You replace a failed compressor, you have to figure out why it did it.